Hi, good night. It's a really pleasure to have the opportunity just to communicate my story. Because I think the best way to communicate is not to say words, but to say stories. Because the words are all the same, all perfect, all dead. Uh, the stories uh, are all different, are all not perfect, are all living. So if I say hate and love, I may tell you that hate is much better than love. So musical, hate. I try to tell a story of hate, try to tell a story of love, and everybody understands that love is much better than hate. So I will try to say some stories about the city of Palermo, but starting from science and life, because you have given a, a fantastic demonstration, not about the science of life, but the necessity to combine science and life. So the, when we heard the stories, we had the stories of life that were strongly connected with the, the science. So we can say science and life. So we can say human and mechanic energy. So we can say Google and Ahmed. I will speak about that a little later. Google and I met the migrant. What is sure that you are just uh, an example of cultural change, because your change is not scientific only, it's cultural. And most of the difficulties you met came from the culture, not from the science. And uh, I know that to change culturally needs conflicts and time. And I think that you met a lot of conflicts, just to let not be approved scientifically, but first to be approved culturally, and then scientifically. And I think that uh, you have 40 years experience. And these 40 years, I speak about Sicily, two things changed in Sicily culturally. You changed the culture in the world with the contribution of Professor Cittadino. I wish to say my admiration, my thanks to Professor Cittadino, to the staff of Professor Cittadino. I see my friend Paolo Quartararo and many other, many other members of the staff. But I think that uh, you produced a tremendous cultural change in the last 40 years. Speaking about Sicily, the same happened with wine. In the last 40 years, just from 1978, Sicilian wine passed from quantity to quality and passed from the periphery of the empire of the economy to the economic world. And the same happened with the city of Palermo. And I think, being the mayor, I have to speak about the city of Palermo. Palermo is the city in Europe who changed the culturally more deeply in the last 40 years. There is no city in Europe who changed the culturally so deeply like Palermo. Yes, I know, somebody can mention Berlin. Yes, I know, somebody can mention Moscow, Praga, Vilnius, Varsavia. But those cities changed in connection with international changes, changed in connection with institutional changes. We changed without changing the constitution. The city of Palermo in the last 40 years changed without changing the, the system. So it means that we changed in our mind, in our style of life. And I wish to say thanks to people who dedicate their life just to let Palermo be free from the mafia, to the people who died in fighting against, uh, fighting against the mafia. I wish to say thanks to the mafia because killed too much and obliged us Palermitan to change our mind. I know it can appear to be a provocation what I say, but it's exactly so. Forty years ago, when I was against the mafia, I was considered atheist and communist. Nobody's perfect. I never been atheist. Nobody's perfect. I never been communist. But that time to be, to be against the mafia was considered to be atheist because the bishops and the cardinals, the church, was uh, in relations with the mafia. Some bishop was a mafia boss. I'm Catholic, therefore I speak against the Catholic bishop. 
it is politically correct because I am Catholic. When I will not be, be no longer will be Catholic, I will not speak against Catholic bishops. But now being Catholic, still Catholic, I speak against the, the Catholic uh, bishop. And I was considered a communist. Believe me, I never been communist. Nobody's perfect. Uh, I respect, of course, the communist, but not communist. I never been, because I was against the government, against the system, and the state at the face of the mafia, and the mafia is the face of the state. So you can you can consider what does it mean to pass in 40 years from capital of the mafia to capital of the culture. It's a long way, but it's a long way that was produced by the violence of the Mafia. The same happened in Germany. I love Germany, I love German culture. German language is my second language. My first, in any case, is Sicilian. My fourth is Italian. So. But anyway, I am even a German actor, so when you wish I can speak about my experience as a German actor. But my opinion is the German people after Hitler became better than before. They were obliged to react. They were obliged just to change their mind, speaking about authorities, speaking about the respect of the law. The same is happening with the Muslims. We have to say thanks. Oh, I know, it's dramatic thanks. We have to say thanks to the violence of Osama bin Laden to the violence of Islamic State, because after Islamic State, after Osama bin Laden, the Muslims have become better. I have a lot of Muslim friends. I remember that 10, 20 years ago, when I spoke with them, they appeared to be just like parliamentarians 40 years ago. I don't know, it's not clear, but you need more information. The situation is not so clear, uh, but let me check. Now, come. So today we are capital of the culture, and we wish just to, to be no longer the capital of the respect of the law, but we wish to be the capital of the respect of the human rights. And you know better than I that uh, in many cases the law is against the human rights. In many cases the human rights are violated not by the criminals, but the people just applying the law. And therefore, we have decided to have just a symbol of our, of our change, just a migrant. Because as I think that today, the migrants are the thermometer of the civilization of, of the humanity. Uh, when somebody asked me how many migrants live in Palermo, I do not reply 60,000, 70,000, 100,000. I reply no one who lives in Palermo is Palermitan. I make no distinctions because I am a human being. And my life changed when I personally met the migrants. And then in front of me, the face of my sister, of my daughter, of my father, of my cousin, they are human beings. Even the migrants are human beings. So Palermo has become just a leader, a leader city in the world welcoming everybody, welcoming everybody because we think that to respect the human rights of the migrants is the best way to respect our human rights. I received a fantastic letter from a young girl, 20 years old, Palermitans, daughter of Palermitans, granddaughter of Palermitans, she wrote to me a letter. She is obliged to live in a, in a wheelchair. Uh, she wrote to me a letter, Mr. Mayor, since you welcome the migrant, I feel less different, more equal, more normal. Diversity. Diversity. And today, today Palermo is the capital of the culture, but not of the artistic culture, but even of the other culture, including the culture of the science, the culture of the life, the culture of the welcoming the people, and uh, of cultures uh, others that were born in other continents and in Palermo they become Palermitan. So we are proud to be a mosaic, not a painting. A mosaic, not a painting. 
Do you know the difference between a mosaic and a painting? <laughs> a painting it does not need the framework. Caravaggio, Miro, Picasso, Gauguin do not need a framework. They are fantastic even without framework. A mosaic without framework is a confused list of pieces of stones without harmony. And we need a framework. Our framework is respect of human rights. To be different because we are human beings, to be equal because we are human beings. is exactly what we try to promote and is the reason for which Palermo is strongly changed, is deeply changed, culturally changed. And I thought, I imagined, together with the Professor Cittadini, it could be interesting introduce you the city of Palermo. The new moment we are just not living now. We are just living and people are understanding that we are just uh, uh, promoting economic development. Because to welcome migrants is even convenient. Palermo today is exciting and safe. May I tell you, exciting, safe, and not expensive, but it's another discussion. But don't lose your time. Eh? In two, three years, it will be expensive. Because we are now attracting a lot of investments coming from all over the world. Because we appear to be interesting, but even safe. When some Muslims reach Palermo, when some Muslims arrive in Palermo, it could be dangerous. The other Muslims living in the city, they call the mayor. The mayor called the police. They defend their city before defending their homeland, before defending their religion. It doesn't happen in Bali in Paris. It doesn't happen in the cities all around Brussels. It means that uh, what happens in another part of Europe does not ha doesn't happen here. We appear to be safe. My daughter lives since 13 years in Paris. Just only to tell you, she was in Bataclan that terrible night. She's still living because she refused a cup of coffee from a filmmaker, a French filmmaker, who said to Eleonora, Eleonora, uh, think, uh, uh, think. Uh, uh, may I offer you a cup of coffee? No thanks, I have to go home because the children come back from the school. Just the, just the time to pass from the, from the, from the bar to the exit. <coughs> I mean, uh, and she says, Papa, when I go in the ballet, because my daughter has the same, does the same mistakes of the father, she lives always with migrant. When she told me, when I go in the ballet and uh, some Muslims or some migrant arrives, it could be dangerous, no one called the mayor, no one called the police. Everybody closed the eye, the mouth, and the ear. And probably some of them hope that instead of one bomb, Somebody can let explode two bombs, not one, two. And I think that today we are just trying to promote this different system of development. And I told you that this, this cultural change this is producing economic result. Just uh, to explain why I spoke about life as a science is enough just uh, to repeat what I've heard during this meeting, because I think this meeting is fantastic, because you demonstrated not that does exist the, the science of life, but this is the combination of life as, of, and science. It is a necessity not only for science of life, even for other science. Even other science have to, 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 to pass the examination of relations with the life, and uh, I think that uh, we can say, I follow what I've read about from Professor Cittadini, that uh, just in the assisted fertilization, uh, humanity passed from uh, what can we say, human to mechanic energy. It was a great change from human to mechanic energy. And uh, it was just uh, the same change that I imagine is happening today when I spoke about Google and Ahmed. Google and Ahmed the migrant, or Google and Luca or Sarah the migrant. 
Google is the virtual connection. Hamed is the human connection. To live only with Google is a tragedy. It should be a tragedy. Because, uh, you know, Google is uh, eternal present. Google has no respect for the time. No memory of the past, no hope for the future. How is it possible to have a vision without respect of the time? But lucky Hamed exists. So if we combine Google and Ahmed, science and life if you prefer, if we combine Google and Ahmed, we can promote the future of the world. When I met the two Googles, they have another name anyway, I call Google. When I met the two founders, the two owner of Google, they invited me just to speak about the, the cultural change of Palermo. How was possible the capital of the mafia is transformed into the capital of the culture? I said, Mr. Google, you are exactly like, like Ahmed. And they asked me, who is uh, Ahmed? And I said, a migrant who arrived uh, passing from the boat to the ship and finally reached the port of Palermo. What is the state for you, Mr. Google? What is the state for you, Mr. Ahmed? What is the state for you, Professor Cittadini? A closer space? A closer space? I, in another of my thousand lives, I was professor in the university. And I was professor of public law, of constitutional law. And uh, I teach it that the state is a closed space. Somebody defending with the flowers, somebody defending with the weapons. But in any case, a closed space. For Mr. Google, for Ahmed, for me, for you, for scientists, the state is not a closed space. Cannot be a closed space. And when I speak with the young people like I am, 20 years old, when I speak with young people like I am, 20 years old, and I say, let's speak about state. They don't understand what is the state. They imagine the state an obstacle to the happiness. For them, the life and the happiness is the village and the world. What is in the middle does not exist. Or in any case, if they are well educated, they will say that is uh, something negative but necessary. Something negative but necessary. Let's speak about identity. What I'm just closing your research. Let's speak about identity. What is identity? Identity does not come from my blood. Does not come from the blood of my parents. I am not, I am not Sicilian because my father, my mother were Sicilians. I'm not Sicilian because I have Sicilian blood. If there is some hematologue, I will ask the difference between my blood and the blood of people from Bangladesh, from Germany, from Spain. But anyway, I'm not Sicilian because my parents were Sicilian. I'm not Sicilian because I have Sicilian blood. I'm Sicilian because I decided to be Sicilian. Being born in Sicily, having uh, Sicilian parents, I can decide uh, to be Tunisian, and the Jewish, German, and Hindu. And going outside from this hole, I can decide to be, to have another identity. Identity is a supreme act of freedom. We have destroyed the freedom of the people in name of the Jus Sanguinis. Jus Sanguinis is a tragedy. Whole, whole genocide. In the history of humanity, we are produced by Jus Sanguinis. I will never forget. I will never forget what happened when I was 10 years old? I was, uh, I told you, I tell stories. I tell stories. It's my way to communicate. Anyway, when I was 10 years old, when I was 10 years old, I was in an aristocratic palace in Palermo. There were two persons, a prince, a duke, just uh, discussing. One of two just uh, injuring the other one. One of the two finished the, the kit of injuries. And having nothing else to say, told to the other, your daughters are not your daughters. Your daughters are not your daughters. I will never forget the fantastic eyes of this old man who replied, the daughters 
are of who let them grow up, not of who did them, made them. If some of you will say to me that my daughters are not my daughters, I will reply, I'm sorry for you, it's too late. Now they are my daughters. After 40 years, they are my daughters. So I think that to be free from these youth sanguinis is just exactly what comes from Google, from Ahmed, a few, with your permission from me. Homeland, homeland. The homeland is the land where I was born with, without my authorization. Because I don't know you, but my parents did not ask me authorization to be born in Italy. They did not ask authorization to be born in Italy. And I must be anagraphically condemned to have Italy as homeland. No, thanks. No, thanks. Google, Ahmed, and me, and probably day after day, the majority of the persons in the world will imagine that we decide our homeland. If I decide to have Italy as homeland, my decision has a double value because it's my free decision. I think that uh, the cultural change that we are living is a hope for the future. Okay, I am not a philosopher. Even if I'm Dr. Honoris Causa in Deutsche Philosophie, but I'm not a philosopher, I'm a jurist. But I'm a, a mayor. With these ideas, I am being always re-elected in the city of Palermo. There is somebody saying that uh, in the stomach human being there is intolerance. The intolerance is in the heel mind of some politicians and in some portfolio that is dirty of blood or some criminal. I think that uh, the story of Palermo can be a positive story, but because we have been condemned, lucky condemned, to change. And I hope, that, of course, all the change are possible to you, to your activities, knowing that there is no change, no cultural change, without conflicts and without uh, time. Because people imagine it is possible to live in eternal present, they will change nothing. People living in eternal present, not having respect of the time, will not be able to change. To change without conflict, with, to change without time is no change. You change it with many conflicts, with many time, much time. So my congratulations and welcome in Palermo and enjoy your stay in this magnificent city. Thanks. All.